Coming up on Virginia Currents, a look at Parkinson's disease through the eyes of two former VMI cadets. Find out how brain surgery helped one man feel more vital at work and how a physical therapy program helped another man get out of a wheelchair and onto the driving range. Also, learn some of the signs of Parkinson's during our talk with VCU's Parkinson's and Movement Disorder Center. Plus, the rockin' and rollin' music of the J.O.B., all next on Virginia Currents. Welcome to Virginia Currents. I'm Daphne Maxwell-Reed. Next to Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease is the second most common age-related neurodegenerative disorder. Parkinson's causes the brain to produce less dopamine, and movements and emotions become hard to control. More men than women suffer. We feature two men who, when they graduated from VMI in the 1960s, had no idea that they would be facing the same enemy. We will visit Carl Rhodes, a standout athlete in high school and at VMI, then a coach at Churchland High School in Portsmouth. He later moved to Brander Mill Woods in Chesterfield to be closer to his family. We also spend the day with Dr. Charles Bryan, an author, historian, and retired CEO of the Virginia Historical Society. Now he's a contributor to the Richmond Times-Dispatch and is a partner in a consulting firm. I was diagnosed in 2004. Morning, Jane. Morning, Charlie. You got happy feet this morning. It's not, not easy, but that's the cards I, I was dealt, and I, I try to fight it, try to win every hand that I can. Travel program that we did at the VHS, have, have I told you about that? that Charlie is the person I've worked most closely with, um, and he's the person who's taught me the most. Um, I tell people often it's like going to a master's program every day. A lot of work. He has so much it's to offer and he's so time. interesting and he is such a valuable resource and so he gets calls for um, speaking engagements and to be a resource. Oh, okay. Even during difficult times we can never get him to relax a little bit. He has such a dedication and passion for not only his work uh, but for people. Doing the search for the director of development. Charlie transformed the historical society. It was a really closed shop. It was a uh, bunch of wonderful men who were basically intellectuals and uh, they had one of the greatest collections. And, but it was a closed society. And Charlie said, I would love to accept the job, but I'll only do it if you'll allow me to open this place up to the public. And uh, that was, uh, it was, it, it, it was transformational, absolutely transformational in the history of the society. And I've always said the only reason I got the job, I was the only candidate who could pronounce his name correctly, Broken Bro. And that was got my vote right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think most Parkinson's patients could keep up the pace that he kept up with the same degree of intellect and uh, innovation and, and uh, it's just, it was extraordinary. With <clears throat> Parkinson's, you as a patient don't notice it, but other people notice it. When he would eat, take a fork full of food. Uh, his motions were deliberate and, 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 and unusual. I was dragging a leg and went to the doctor. He said, you've either had a brain uh, tumor, you've had a stroke, or you have Parkinson's. So he gave me a series of tests and eliminated the other two, and it turned out to be Parkinson's. So how long has it been that you've been married? 48 years. She was she had a wonderful smile and a wonderful laugh, and we ended up getting married the uh, month after I graduated from VMI. My father-in-law, her dad, was the professor's class that I flunked in math. And I lost my father at a young age, and he was in some ways a father that I never had. What makes the marriage work? A lot of love. Yep. A lot of talk. We've been very fortunate in both of our children that turned out to be very special. And these little grandchildren, the oldest one will soon be 11 and the youngest one will be three. You remain faithful to each other no matter what, and you're there in sickness and health, and we've had certainly both of those. 
some measure of fate two years ago, and she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And uh, that was tough. <laughs> Um, she's here. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, two-time survivor. Yeah. I am not coming for a triple crown. I'm uh, two two-time winner, and that's yeah. it. It's not coming back. And you were at stage four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was amazing. She never complained. <laughs> and I'm a complainer. <laughs> I rallied, and you, you're exhausted, but you do what you have to do. And I try my best to keep the house up, up, uh, you know, clean and neat. <laughs> <laughs> he was diagnosed. His sister died that day. His only sibling, his, they were very close. She was practically my best friend. Sometimes I wonder how we did it, but you do it. You do it. And it, it, I don't want to say it makes you stronger, but it, it did make me realize that I had a strength that I didn't know I had. People who, who have Parkinson's, um, some of the symptoms are shuffling. So you want to get him to do repetitious things um, that requires his mind and his body to you know work together. Walking kind of does that. And I mean, that's something that he does every day. And uh, we don't want him, him to forget how to do that. So trying to work on him taking longer steps and slowing it down. What is it like at your worst during an off period? It's hard to describe. It's no pain. And I tell people it's like driving a car with your parking brake on. It's just you can't move. And there's just a general um, slowness about everything. My speech slurs. You'd go two hours and you felt fine. And all of a sudden, uh, you just like somebody pulling the parking brake up and then holding it up. And then you could take some medication, parking brake would go down and you'd be fine. Just these peaks and valleys. And I was taking, for just Parkinson's alone, 20 something pills a day. Take off, off, off. You all right? Yep. What okay. Happened? I just felt like I was still walking. Mm. I, I read a lot about deep brain stimulation and uh, decided I'd go ahead and do it. And now I'm down to eight Parkinson's pills a day. The ons and offs are much more, are much less pronounced. It's more of a steady, um, mediocre feeling in a way, <laughs> rather than like that. This measures the um, amount of units, uh, the amount of uh, impulses that go into the uh, device, that go into my brain, and that stimulates the brain. My stimulator is right here. They run the wires up through my neck, and they uh, put the uh, two um, wires in the brain on each side, and they found the sweet spot. So a device like this, there are possibilities for Alzheimer's and uh, fighting depression in addition to uh, uh, Parkinson's. To impart a message that reinforces the scout oath to do, do, to do my best. A little bit of slurring. I know. Is it because you're tired? Yeah, probably. I have noticed, especially, it helped with his his small motor skills, buttoning the buttons, his keyboarding, things like yeah. that. It it did not help at all with the um, gait, with the um, freezings, which is another bizarre thing mm -hmm. about Parkinson's and it's hard to explain if he got up and tried to walk in the other room maybe he could walk in the other room maybe when he got to the door he stopped yep. and he cannot get through the door you ready? yep but in the grocery store if I turn the into a new aisle there's somebody there and I have to stop suddenly that'll throw me for a loop and I'll have to start think for a minute all right, lift your leg, walk, and then go ahead. It's, it's uh, bizarre. Crowds are becoming a problem. Yeah. It takes you longer to do things. I think I told you it takes me an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes now. Hit. Hit. Dealing with Parkinson's, Hit. the connection Hit. or the communication between the mind and the, and the body Hit. It's, breaks down. Hit. So um, Hit. 
what we're it, trying to do is to have him it, to respond to commands and uh, make his body do what his mind is saying to do. Okay. So that's, that's uh, one of the reasons that we do boxing. Now, I'm, I'm a personal trainer, but it's the determination and the desire of the client that really helps the, the exercises they go for. Because he doesn't have to put forth effort, you know, but he does because he doesn't want to be defeated by this. So he's an awesome guy. What's your hope for the future? Somebody discovers a cure. Yeah. And even if they don't discover a cure, if they could discover how to stop the disease so it doesn't get any worse mm -hmm. because it is progressive, yeah. that would be. And it's going to happen, maybe not for us, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it will happen. We'll keep fighting it. Both of us. Yeah. <laughs> Together. Together. That's the big thing. Love you, darling. Love you. I coached uh, football for 19, baseball for 24. I coached some JV basketball when they needed somebody to help. During high school and college, I loved, I liked them all. I like, I love basketball. I just, in football, I played in and I caught some passes that were thrown by a great quarterback and they were easy to catch. I was lucky to be there to catch the ball. And it'd be my, my brother, Scott knew Charlie, and it introduced us at the first 5K we did, I, that I did. And my brothers and my sons and all their families came down and participated in the 5K. I, I didn't know Charlie, I mean, as far as at the Institute at all, because I had my own rats to look after me. Academy is a rat, it's a freshman. Back in, you know, 1965 and 66, that's what they were called. They still call rats. I don't know if they call the young ladies ratesses. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I fell, I don't know where I might have been had Ronnie, my friend R.D., my brother Rat, hadn't come. He was on his way to Nag's Head. If he hadn't come to the door, I might still be on the floor. But he came to the door, called my son. My son makes arrangements to come to Richmond at a place where I meet uh, the best OT in the world and do LSVT. When he first got here, he needed physical assistance to get in and out of the bed and on and off the toilet and basically to move about. He wasn't able to walk by himself. Big out, big down. With LSVT, it's Up. Um, retraining the brain and the movement um, such that the neurochemistry of the brain is working better with exercise and um, you're actually making them better rather than compensating. With LSVT you push hard. They have to work very hard. They should have a perceived exertion of seven to eight out of a ten point scale. They have to work hard to get their body to respond and to realize what it's supposed to do. And when Carl started at Beshalom, his balance was pretty poor. He wasn't able to stand up and, and through incredible amount of work, he, he improved it significantly, significantly. Ready? Big step out and back. She's just got a, a knack for motivating people to do what she wants them to do. And that's the way I felt. I also had a feeling that I'm not gonna let this girl beat me. <laughs> okay? Okay, relax, I see a lot of dyskinesia. And what, what do you do to relax? Drink a beer. <laughs> LSVT, the program, is four times a week, times four weeks, an hour each session. And then there's also homework that they have to do, working on things that are difficult. Maybe it's putting on a jacket. Maybe it's um, getting into a table with an armchair. It's having the ability to actually have power over Parkinson. It has worked wonders. We've, we've gone out riding bikes, something he hadn't done in, what, a decade or more. Yeah, it's a long time. He's been out in a kayak. 
You've done lots of things that... Golf. Golf, yeah. There's a tremendous amount of um, muscle motion and great balance for. In fact, uh, maybe he'll show you what he can do now that he used to do when he was uh, a football player. We called it karaoke. <laughs> Some people want milk, I want dopamine. <laughs> I wish you could just drink some of it every morning. That's what's missing, right? That's what's missing. For people with Parkinson's. Yeah. Patika. Patika, 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 Patika. With LSBT, by teaching a patient to use one command, speak out, speak loud, that um, they can d take a deep breath support, they imitate what the therapist is doing, they slow their rate of production, and their articulation improves when you increase your vocal intensity. Try to get two swallows out of one sip. Parkinson's disease, um, th there is a normal, unfortunate change in swallow, chewing and swallowing function called dysphagia. And the motor uh, function, the muscular function gets weak. And unfortunately, it causes the risk of obstructive choking, which was what Carl experienced. Also aspiration, meaning food or liquid goes into the airway. Part of our plan of care was to develop strengthening exercises. <laughs> um, we also use neuromuscular e e stimulation respiratory support exercises, neck exercises. Um, Carl's been a model um, patient. Hopefully, I don't become like my brother Rat down in Alabama and some other people that are uh, a lot more disabled than I am with Parkinson's. They still use a rollator or maybe a wheelchair. Uh, I know what it means to use both of them, and I don't want to ever do it again if I can help it. I like being able to walk out my front door. Sometimes I run over to the clubhouse just for the heck of it. That's my dad, and that's my mom. My father was the best coach I ever had. He had Parkinson's, and I don't know that Parkinson's killed him, but, but he fell and you know couldn't recover from the broke his hip and uh, just small pictures of Honey Bunny. We started dating in juniors in high school. That's the, the, uh, my youngest and that's my oldest. This must be grandchildren. They used to like to wrestle with me when they were smaller. Uh, they call your wife Uma? Yeah, somewhere or another, I think it's German. Poor grandma. How did she die? Her third bout of cancer was in the brain. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have thought of that. No. I should be able to talk about it. Carl comes every week. He encourages other residents to participate. I teach adaptive chair dance for people with Parkinson's, as well as their caregivers, because it gives them um, a social activity that they can do together. Boom, papa, boom, papa, add your knee. Dance movement um, enhances our lives physically, mentally, emotionally, socially. It's a great stress reducer. Sometimes they have freezing movements as they walk across the floor, but when they hear music, it does something to the dopamine in the brain, and they don't have these frozen movements. So if they're thinking about moving to the timing of a song, they may not have that same frozen movement. He comes to what my Matt Challenge class, and he also comes to Men's Muscle Mania. I do power size too. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Power he does size. power size too, which and is touchy. one of my aerobic classes. And touchy. And touchy. What we do with, uh, especially with power size. Yeah. You got your feet moving, you got to move your hands. That's, that's complex movement. Mm -hmm. And so that's what parkies have to strive for. Hands waving in the clouds. Step out to the left. In Tai Chi, there's a, there's a lot of balance in it uh, because you have the, the moves are very slow and you have to pick your feet up and so you're balanced on one foot 
even if it's a quick pick up and down, you're still balanced on the one foot. Uh, it's serene and, and de-stressing as well. Press the energy back into the earth. Can we have a copy of that, because that's my best. I think about where he came from and where he is now and how much better he is than he when I first met him. I think it's amazing, and, and that's what I love to see. I like to see it work. Without continued exercise, his symptoms are significantly um, worse. Exercise is medicine. Bye! You essentially got your life back. Yes, I did. Enjoy it. Life is good. For more details on the free Parkinson's dance class that is offered at many locations, visit RichmondParkinsonsDanceProject.com. And for more information on LSVT, go to LSVTGlobal.com. Dr. Charles Bryan was instrumental in helping raise funds for the VCU Parkinson's and Movement Disorders Center in Short Pump. The center strives to improve the lives of people with movement disorders through comprehensive care, research, education, and outreach. With us now is Dr. Jonathan Snyder, a neurologist with a specialty in movement disorders at the center and an assistant professor in the Department of Neurology at VCU. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Would you start by telling us the possible early signs of Parkinson's? Sure. So Parkinson's disease is a condition where people don't have enough of the movement chemical dopamine in their brain. So if they don't have enough movement chemical, they get less movement. So for one, they may notice some slowness or smallness of movement, and that may manifest with decreased facial expression or softer voice or smaller handwriting. Perhaps they don't swing their arms as much when they walk or their steps get small and shuffling and, and kind of stooped. Um, they may notice uh, stiffness and rigidity. That may uh, manifest with people having trouble getting up from low car seats, soft chairs, or trouble turning over in bed. Patients with Parkinson's may get a little bit of a tremor at rest, and that's a, a tremor in your hand that you may notice when you're uh, sitting there watching TV, relaxed, distracted, and you start to have your hand tremor. Or maybe when you're walking and your hand is hanging at rest at your side and you start mm -hmm. to, to see it shake. Uh, people may also get a little unstable or imbalanced on their feet as well, or some combination of those symptoms. And do you generally notice them yourself, or is it a loved one who brings it to your attention? It may be either way. I've had some patients that notice it first. I've had some patients who don't notice it at all, and it's the loved one or the family member or the coworker who mentions it to them, um, and then they uh, come to me uh, or come to another doctor to then have it evaluated. What kind of doctor would you seek to diagnose this? So it's good to see a specialist, certainly a neurologist, which is a doctor who specializes in Parkinson's and other brain or nerve problems, and ideally a neurologist who's a movement disorder specialist, who super specializes in Parkinson's and other conditions that can look like Parkinson's or mimic Parkinson's. They can then evaluate you to, to diagnose it and then to give you treatment options as well. What are some of the first things that you should do mm -hmm. to slow it down. Yeah. So un unfortunately, we don't have any definite ways to slow down, reverse, stop the course of the disease. But some of the most important things people can do, the closest thing we have to that is, is exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is so important in life in general, even more so in patients who have Parkinson's disease. Patients who exercise do so much better than those who don't. And you don't have to run a marathon, you don't have to bench press 500 pounds, I mean, you can if you want to, but as long as you're exercising on a regular basis uh, with whatever type of exercise you enjoy doing, uh, that can make all the difference in the world. Now, tell me some of the research that's been going on to help in the diagnosis of mm -hmm. Parkinson's. So there's a very robust uh, research community through a number of organizations, and we're looking at a lot of different things, looking at ways to help the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and um, especially to try to find some way to slow down reverse, stop, cure the disease. They can check out our website uh, where we talk about some of the research we're doing. Also, um, the Michael J. Fox Foundation has some great information about research projects, as does clinicaltrials.gov. Um, just great resources where patients with Parkinson's can learn more about what's out there and what we're actively up to. And living with Parkinson's is not a death sentence. You can live an active life exactly. with Parkinson's. Exactly. I have many patients who have it for years or decades, and they're going about their business, living their life. Wonderful. Sometimes the symptoms get in the way, but that's where your doctors are here for, to help you out, to help you live your life and do your thing. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Snyder. And for more information on Parkinson's, visit parkinsons.vcu.edu.
take it to a better life. This week's spotlight on Virginia music shines on the J.O.B., a Richmond band formed in 2008 by musicians Jim O'Farrell and Jason Crawford. J.O.B. was intended to be a vehicle for the powerful songs Jim wrote while serving in Iraq. Their music evolved into hard-hitting, alternative rock with a blues pulse and Americana roots. J.O.B. has had three songs make national top 40 charts, including Red Eye, which we leave you with now. Thanks for watching Virginia Currents and join us next time for more inspiring stories. I'm Daphne Maxwell-Reed. Motor is a rattling beneath our feet Tonight